Bum 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 bum. Tomatoes. Hello, welcome to the video for what is material, the normalized node. I've gone ahead. I've pulled up the content examples math hall, so we can go ahead and cover an example of normalization of vectors, and then go into an example, a visual example. So first of all, normalizing a vector is basically converting the vector's values down into a version where it's from 0 to 1 rather than, you know, negative 10 to 50 or whatever your actual vector's values are. Let's try to explain this with a little bit of an example here. So, a vector that has a value of 4, 2, 3, x, y, z, 4, 2, 3, has a length of 5.3 with a few other decimals. Now what they do in order to normalize it is try to get these values based on the length down into something between 0 and 1. So you know relatively how each of these values compare to each other. And so it takes the length, divides each of the values, and you get this as the result. Whereas 4 normalized in this example is going to be 0.74, your 2 will be 0.37, and your 3 is going to be 0.55. Now if you actually look at these, basically your 4 is your largest number, so it's going to be your largest normalized vector value. Your 3 is your next with 0.55, and your 2 is your least with 0.37. And if you notice, they are comparative. In this example, 4 is twice the value of 2. In your normalized value, your 0.74 is twice the value of your 0.37. So, normalizing a vector, normalization basically is a way to bring items within the same range for comparative purposes. Normalizing a vector is a way of, being, again, bringing it down to a 0 to 1 range for comparative purposes. It's also helpful, for example, if you want to compare two vectors to each other, but they may be magnitudes difference. For example, you may have a vector 10, 20, 50, and you may have another vec vector of 20, 50, 95, and you actually want to see which one is the longer one or which one has a greater x value but it's harder comparatively because they are two different sets of numbers. When you normalize them, bring them back down to that zero to one range, it's very easy to compare and get accurate results. So for our example, what I've done is I have a function running here, a material function, and we're gonna go and look at it. Basically using the normalize to normalize our object position compared to our camera position. We're subtracting it to get our distance, but we're not getting the distance in length. We're actually just getting the difference vector-wise. Now, since that is a large number, we're normalizing it back to 0 to 1, so that way we can visualize it. Because remember, colors red, green, blue, 0 through 1 in terms of the value, 0 being off, 1 being on. And when we feed that in to our x, y, and z, or our RGB value, we're going to see red, green, or blue based on which direction our camera is compared to an object in the forward or negative vector. Let me show you this. So right here, if we're looking at this side object here, we can see Z up or Z plus is going to be up. Y plus is going to be right. And then if we look over here, we can see X plus is going to be forward. So when we're looking at this object, we are seeing red because we're looking at it from the x plus direction. If we start turning to the side, we're now at the y plus direction and it's green. And of course, if we keep turning, we're now at the x minus. Of course, we're going to have no value, so it's going to be zero. Y minus is going to give us zero. And if we duck underneath, we're going to go ahead and see z plus, which is up, so it's going to be blue, and z minus which is going to be black, assuming I can actually look at it from Z without angling it, which I'm having a hard time doing. Anyways, Z, it's, it's minus. There we go. 
So to see a little bit more of an example, let me unhide this other queue and let me go ahead and hook up this other set of nodes here. And we'll hook our normal up. And basically we have two different things here, which are actually almost identical, except one is using normalize and the other is not. Because we are taking a large value, our camera position, this is a large vector value. Our camera position could be 1000, 1000, 1000, or it could be, you know, 0.7. It depends on where we're at in the world. What we're doing is getting the dot product of that, multiplying it by text or coordinates, which is just an easy way for me to get this nice little gradient ramp from green to red. That's all I'm doing is just using it for a gradient ramp. And then we're going to go ahead and we're applying that to our emissive color. Now the difference here is my camera position is being fed into my dot product naturally. For my secondary version, my camera position is being fed into a normalized vector and then into the dot product. So of course our results are, on our left, we have our nice gradual 0 to 1 ramp based on our texture coordinates. We've normalized it. It's back down to 0 to 1 range. And because it's in our emissive texture, 0 to 1 is going to give us our natural color range. This one, it is the same. It's still the same ramp. We can see the little bits of red here. We can see our green colors where they're supposed to be green on the left, bottom left and red on the top right. But our problem is because we're putting in our camera position, sorry, our camera position, which is such a large value, and then multiplying it, we're taking this large value and multiplying it by a one, basically a zero to one range, and we're getting huge results, which is why our emissive color is showing us these blown out colors. By normalizing it, we're again taking our very large range, bringing it all down to a zero to one value, and then of course that makes it color safe, and we're seeing non-overblown colors. So that's one use for normalize for vectors. Most of the time it's used to compare two things. You want to compare two distances or you want to compare two values against each other, but you need to make sure they're within the same range. You're going to use your normalize, but this is a way where you can actually see where normalize is helping us get our colors back into a more valid range. So if you have any questions or comments on the normalize node, please feel free to leave them below.